How well do you know your brain? How well can you explain what your brain is doing when you open your laptop to work, or open a textbook to study, or conduct a meeting? In the book, Your Brain at Work, author David Rock uses the latest neuroscience to help you understand what's going on in your brain while you work with a simple metaphor. Rock says your mind is like a theater. The stage in that theater is your short-term working memory, and it's controlled by your prefrontal cortex, that region just behind your forehead. There are five functions you can perform on this stage. You can use your stage to understand, to recall, to memorize, to inhibit, and to decide. To help you think of these five functions throughout the video, think of the acronym U-R-M-I-N-D, your mind. Now it's virtually impossible to thrive in the workplace if you can't perform these five functions effectively. And none of these five functions can be completed without actors and audience members in your theater. The actors are objects, tasks, and pieces of information you're focused on at any one moment. This video is currently an actor on your stage, and your audience is trying to make sense of it based on prior knowledge. Because audience members in your theater are maps of information in your long-term memory. You have a map for recognizing objects in your environment, like your laptop, your phone, or a piece of fruit sitting in front of you. And those maps help you determine the value of each of those objects. Your maps also contain instructions for what you should do when you interact with one of these objects. Each time you try to understand, recall, or memorize, you're trying to get audience members to connect with actors on stage. Each time you make a decision, you get actors to line up on stage and audition for a lead role in an upcoming play. Now, as you try to make sense of what's happening in the current moment, other actors are waiting in the wings, wanting to get on stage and capture your attention. These backstage actors are distracting events in your environment, like a text message that pops up on your phone, or something you're worried about, like a presentation you need to give tomorrow. This is where the inhibit function of your theater comes into play. When you inhibit, it's as if you're using a stage director to stop actors from coming onto the stage and interrupting a good performance. Now, in a typical theater, you could fit a few thousand people, and the stage could hold a few hundred people. But your mental theater isn't a typical theater. In your mental theater, there are billions of seats for audience members, but only a few actors can fit on the stage at one time. Recent research shows that the short-term working memory of the human brain, that which represents your stage, can only fit four actors. That means your present attention can only hold up to four chunks of information at any moment. These chunks of information might be four numbers, four words, or four familiar sentences. You may have heard that it's possible to focus on seven units of information at one time, but the study that originated that idea was misleading. When someone showed that they could remember seven digits of information, like seven digits of a phone number, they were actually utilizing a process of simplifying and chunking to do so. In the case of the phone number, they found a way to chunk the first three numbers, the next two numbers, and the last two numbers, and see the phone number as three chunks of information. Another basic example of simplifying and chunking is using an acronym to remember more than four pieces of new information, like I did with the Your Mind acronym. Acronyms in the form of a familiar word or phrase represent one chunk of information on your stage. Using acronyms is like dressing up an actor in an elaborate costume. It's still one actor, but that actor contains layers of information. Although you might be able to fit more than four actors on your stage at one time, a study by Brian McGallery at New York University found that the number of chunks of information you can remember accurately with no memory degradation is, remarkably, only one. The second thing you need to know about your mental theater is that the stage lighting is very restricted. The stage is illuminated by a single spotlight, and that spotlight can only focus on one actor at a time. If two or more actors are trying to get your attention, the stage light needs to rapidly switch between those two actors. Now imagine watching a performance where two actors are talking at the same time and a spotlight is rapidly switching between those actors. It's safe to say that would be a terrible performance to watch. In the book, author David Rock explains just how terrible that performance can be. Rock explains a study from the University of California at San Diego that showed when participants tried to do two cognitively demanding tasks at the same time, their cognitive capacity can drop from that of a Harvard MBA to that of an eight-year-old child. It's a phenomenon called dual task interference. A study at the University of London found that splitting your attention between email, text messages, and work tasks 
reduce your mental capacity by an average of 10 points on an IQ test. That's the same effect of losing a night of sleep. The third thing you must know about your mental theater is that your director becomes less effective later in the day. Over the course of the day, hundreds of unwanted actors are trying to get on stage and mess up the scene. Each time your director has to hold back an unwanted actor, it loses a bit of energy. Eventually, the director becomes too weak and tired to stop unwanted actors from coming onto the scene and ruining the performance of the actor on stage. These unwanted actors are afternoon food cravings or nearby conversations, and they take the spotlight away from important work you want to focus on. Now, given these three limitations of the human brain, what changes can you and I make during the day to mitigate these limitations and optimize our brain's ability to do great work? Well, first, you and I need to limit the number of actors on stage by isolating two options at a time. If you're deciding between five or more colors for a design, you might want to try doing a head-to-head -head battle starting with the first two colors. This would involve isolating color one and color two on your list and asking yourself, which of these two colors improves my design? Then whichever color wins would go on to face the third color on your list. When you isolate two options, it's as if you're having a boxing match between options, and the winning option becomes the top contender, which other options have to face off with, one by one. The second thing you can do to optimize your brain at work is to notice when you're rapidly switching your spotlight between multiple sources of information, like a text message exchange, or your email inbox, or work tasks, and start sequencing your tasks in a serial fashion. If you wanted to get three tasks in the next hour done, you could set up a sequence of three 20 minute time blocks and assign each task to a separate time block. When you do this, you're essentially giving each actor on stage a chance to be in the spotlight and do their part to the best of their ability. This way, the audience has a much better chance of connecting with that actor, which means making associations to items in your long-term memory to better understand, recall, and memorize. And lastly, if you wanna optimize your brain at work, you need to notice when your stage director is having a hard time holding back unwanted actors from walking onto the stage. When you find yourself getting increasingly distracted, it's wise to push cognitively demanding tasks to the next morning when your stage director's capacity to hold off actors is restored and important actors on the stage can do their part uninterrupted. If you need to plan a big project or understand a complex subject or make a major decision, your best chance for a good performance will be in the first half of any day when your stage director can do a better job of keeping unwanted actors off the stage. In the end, by simply considering the theater analogy of your mind and thinking, my stage is getting full, or I'm moving my spotlight around too much, the scene is getting chaotic, or my stage director is having a hard time keeping new actors off the stage, I should do this in the morning. You'll start optimizing the five critical functions your brain does at work. That was the core message that I gather from your brain at work. By David Rock. It's a great book that explains many more nuances of how your brain functions at work. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. As always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.